Podcast. I'm here with Cristobal Mondragon, owner of Queen Bee Cleaning Services, and they're growing so fast, he's put me to work as well. So let's get hustling. Last time we talked to Chris, Queen Bee has crossed the seven-figure annual revenue. That's pretty incredible considering him and his wife started the business in 2015 with only $5,000. If you invest money right from the get-go, you will scale so fast. Out of that nest egg of ways to generate business, what's giving you the best ROI? I spent thousands of hours, thousands of dollars perfecting the perfect formula, right? And you're willing to share all those amazing secrets with, with your viewers. viewers. Absolutely. That's if you are a regular Upflip viewer, you probably recognize Chris. In our last interview with him, he shared his insights on how to start a cleaning business. And today, we're chatting with him about his growth tips and scaling hacks. Today, we're following up with Chris to see how Queen Bee Cleaning Service is doing now, what's changed since last time, and how he scaled his business to a million dollar plus annual revenue. So let's go catch up with Chris. How you doing, Chris? Hey, Paul, how you doing, man? Good, Good to see, see you, you again. Yes, of course. We're back at your crib. Oh, welcome back. There uh, you go. Absolutely, guys, don't tune out because we're gonna drop some bombs again like the previous video. Chris, for those who are new to Queen Bee, tell them a little bit about when and why you started the cleaning business. Yeah, of course. Oh, so it's been seven years now. Uh, yeah, it started in 2015. My wife was the one that planted the seed on me. Mm -hmm. She was already cleaning homes for another uh, person. She's like, we should start her on. At the beginning, I was like, maybe, no, I don't want to do that. It's just uh, this, the house cleaning world is like, I don't see myself doing it, but it's been uh, such a such a good decision. What were you doing when this this, this decision was made to get into cleaning? So I was in car sales. I was, wor okay. I was working in a car dealership. I had benefits. I had everything you could ask for, right? But the idea of having to start your own, it was always there in the back of my mind. Like, mm -hmm. well, let's give it a shot and see what happens. You had a little hesitation from just nice, comfortable car business to like cleaning. Uh -huh. It's just a completely different uh, change of directions. And that was where I was like, well, I don't have experience with it. I, right. I don't know if it was gonna work, but I was like, doesn't hurt to try. Cool. How has your team grown since we last chatted? How many employees do you have right now? So we currently still have 22 employees. It is so tough to find quality employees. Here's the thing. We don't really suffer when it comes to getting people in. But mm -hmm. the problem is, once that they go and work for a couple of days, that's when people realize, like, you know what? Maybe it's not for me. I see. So, you know, house cleaning sounds fairly easy. And it's, it's, it's an easy job, but it's physical. So mm -hmm. after eight hours of cleaning, you'll be like, wow. So you're saying there's a lot of turnover. Or a lot of be. turnover. That is true. It is, it's, it's something that we're trying to fi figure out a, a, a way to attract better quality. We have raised our rates accordingly, especially because everything now is going up. So that has attracted more people, right? But uh, the problem is they think like, well, I'm going to make $20, $22 an hour cleaning homes. We get people all the time, but a couple of days are like, well. In terms of scaling a cleaning business, what does it need for it to scale? Are there systems, tools? Could imagine there'd be a lot. So give us a quick snapshot. No, for sure. Well, one of the best things, the first things you need to have in place is cleaners, right? Without of course. workers, you know, you, you can't, you, okay, getting a customer is easy. It really is. But if you don't have field workers, you know, you're gonna have to be doing it. And mm -hmm. so you really need to have cleaners first. So definitely get uh, at least two or three. And then the second th part is we'll be having a scheduling software. Mm -hmm. So keep everything organized so that way you remember to create the invoices, charging people at the right time. So I think those two are the most critical parts that you need at the beginning. I can imagine a nightmare of schedules, you know, 30, 40 units having to be cleaning. How did you deal with that initially? Oh, it was it was chaos, uh, just like you said, because there was like really no softwares out there, you know, back in 2015. So I was trying to kind of patch everything. I was doing the scheduling on Google Calendar. I had the invoices on Google Sheets. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. It was just all over the place until I found the software. And then from there, it was fairly easy to scale. Boom, growth, mm -hmm. scale, It really revenue. is. Okay. What are the one to two biggest factors, Chris, that contribute to your growth? I think the two biggest factors is uh, having a customer service. It really is is that the most important one. And the Seems second simple. one, it's simple. And a lot of people and a lot of uh, small business owners overlook that. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, you know, when people are looking for this type of service, they don't have the time to be calling around. So if you answer the phone Comes call, down you get it so that's like the number one the most important one and i think the second one just investing you know 10 percent out of the growth back into the uh marketing mm -hmm. so google ads Yelp ads greatly last i'll never stop that throughout the year i have that so i think those two things so exceptional customer service and uh, online marketing you you'll you'll grow any business fast 
Talk to us about the workflow with Queen Bee. Mm -hmm. You get a job request, the scheduling, the phone calls, the setup. How does that work? Just really quickly fly through that. Yeah, so usually it works like this. We get a call, we provide a quote over the phone, and once the customer agrees to the price, we collect the credit card. You always want to collect the credit card. You don't want to chase your money. You know, with that, we put them into a calendar or a scheduler. So we look at the calendar based on zip codes, right? So that way, uh, the VAs, when we get a call, so okay, look at the zip code, look at the calendar and see what spot is available with that route. Mm -hmm. And then we assign it. At that point, the cleaners get a notification on their phone. They're like, there you have a new job, this is the address. And then, and then they can accept it, okay, they can reject it in, in case they can't do it, right? Mm -hmm. So essentially that's what happens. Let's say they accept the job, what happens now it's uh, they go and clean and to make sure that every time everything gets done correctly so there's nothing missed we have oh, an app control well, in the same app actually has a checklist mm -hmm. so, so you use that we use a checklist because you know we used to do paper paper uh, checklist but what happened you know the cleaners they will just Mm -hmm. to check and then, and then they'll leave it and then customers will call like well they forgot this and so we figure okay let's let's figure out there's a, an app that allows us to do that and there is and so jobber is so you put a checklist and they cannot complete the job if they haven't completed the, the checklist so they really have Makes to take sense. the time yeah. to go into each room make sure everything is checked off and then they click complete at that point when they click complete we get a notification the customer service department runs the card and then we send them the review request. Mm -hmm. And then the following day, that's when we call them and say, hey, we wanna make sure that everything went fine. Would you be interested in signing up for recurring service? Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much the workflow, how it, how it works. When a cleaning business is struggling, what would your one piece of advice to them be in terms of identifying it, getting over it, mm -hmm. and growing? I guess it really comes down to what you said, you know, identify what is really causing the problem, what's stopping you from moving the needle forward, and then fix it. In my case, I'll give you a good example. When we started, I did not like the fact of doing in-person estimates. I was the bottleneck. I decided, you know what, let's Boom, change that. bulb. Let's make it faster, let's make it easier. So I start selling over the phone and then voila. Uh, my wife was not a fan of that because she's like, how can you sell it without seeing the home? I'm like, uh -huh. obviously we're doing it this way and it's not working either. Let's try to see the other place. So always try different things, right? You never know. Mm -hmm. You might, you struck, you know, luck at the first time you change and then, you know, move on from that. Is that the only way you price? People can't get a proposal online via form yet? Um, so, so I actually have three different ways. So, um, and then, I found out that there's different types of customers. I have a booking form where you can literally go and buy. If you don't want to talk to anyone, I see. you can definitely go and sit and do that. Put your, uh, your package, bedrooms. whatever. Uh -huh. And then select it and, and then we'll go and take care mm -hmm. of it. The other way is like people don't like to put the credit cards online. So I have a quote form as well for that. Interesting. So like, okay, just give me your information and then we'll email you and then we'll call you to provide you with a quote. And then number three is over the phone. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, tell me how big it is, how often you need it. Do you have any pets? Then based on that, I'll tell you the price. And of course I said, hey, you know, this quote is, you know, subject to change based on the actual condition of the home. What systems and SOPs do you have in place to continue growing? I mean, I can imagine there's a lot. So what are you, software, scheduling? There's quite a bit of software, right? You know, you have to have a scheduling software, uh, a phone system, internal communication system, right. a ticket system for your customers so nothing gets missed through the cracks. Uh, there's a lot of uh, softwares that you need to put in place in order to run this all machine. Well, which, mm -hmm. which one or two can you mention names? Uh, one of the third, great question. Uh, most, most of my business, I run it from my phone using a app called Slack. Okay. So inside of Slack, it's an yeah. internal communication platform where I have channels just for about every scenario. Mm -hmm. Cancellations, new charges, everything. So you got Slack, what else is on? I have on Ring Central, so that's Ring just Central. for having the virtual assistants answering the phone in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And um, ultimately I have Jobber, which is what I have for my, you know, all my jobs, creating the invoices, nice. keeping all, all organized and, and my routes. Would you guys like to have your own seven figure cleaning business like Chris? Well, Upflip and Chris partnered up and developed a complete blueprint that you can use to start your own seven-figure cleaning business. Paul, this blueprint reveals critical information that I've learned over the years through my mistakes and failures. It covers things like how to dominate your area using Google Ads and SEO, how to find Airbnb customers that pay you good money for your services, how you can 
outsource your customer service department to other countries so you can scale your company even faster. It also teaches you how to hire and train your cleaners so they become efficient. And also it comes with all the manuals, templates, and instructions on how to run your business smoothly. It really is a step-by-step -step framework on how to start, grow, and explode your cleaning company to seven figures. Well, guys, you know that everything we do is top-notch and this course is no different. It's like buying a franchise. It has everything you need. It covers all aspects of starting, growing and scaling a successful cleaning business. And on top of that, you get Chris's support. So don't delay, the price will go up. Go to upflip.com forward slash cleaning dash business dash course or click the link in the description below. Right, Chris? That's right. You know, let's say you have a system in place, the business continues growing, and at some point you realize, okay, this system's no longer the next step to mm -hmm. continue scaling. How, what, what things do you look for as a business when you know it's time to, okay, we need to implement a new system? Mm -hmm. well, that's a great question. Let's say, for example, uh, calling the calling feature, right? When, when I started, I was using uh, Google Voice, and it worked great, but then I started realizing there was a lot of missed calls. I'm like, what's mm -hmm. happening? And it's like, oh, because we're already on, on a call, there's no way for me to forward another to another caller. So it's like, well, calls, I don't want any missed calls. Right, uh, a call could be potentially worth thousands of dollars. Right. So I decided to implement a different system that is more robust, uh, allows us to take on more calls. There's a call waiting feature for us, so mm -hmm. it really it's, it's just a better system. So it really comes down when you 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 listen to your employees. That's one of the things. I actually learned this from a book from Paul Akers, uh, Lean Lean, um, mm -hmm. and it's all about cutting waste. And so the way I do it, because I cannot test everything, I ask my employees. You know, they're the field workers. Tell me what can I do or what, or what can we improve same with my customer service I talk to my VA say hey tell me what can I do what softwares do we need to make your life easier when you're about to t test a new system don't cancel the other one just try mm -hmm. for a month and see if it's actually gonna be a good fit most of us give you 14 day trial really mm -hmm. almost everything so you can use those those 14 day try it see That's if you like it transitional period and if you like it then you make the move Okay. And by the way, you guys, he mentioned Paul Akers. I want you to check out that episode. We've got a number of episodes with Paul. They're incredible. Check them out in the link below. Absolutely. Chris, well, it's one thing that you did early on in the game that helped set you up for where you are today and continuing to grow. I think I mentioned it earlier and I'll mention again, it's just online marketing. Uh, a lot of companies still want to grow, uh, you know, by referrals and whatnot, and you still grow, but very slow. If you invest money right from the get-go, you will scale so fast, but at the same time, try to protect your reputation. I think if you put marketing, but then protect your reputation, get reviews, right. that, that's a, a perfect recipe for success. Awesome, and I know you spoke about a lot more details, you guys, on our podcast. So if you're looking to dive into more details, check out our podcast. Uh, when you get a chance, upflip.com forward slash podcast. His episode is episode Number six. 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 I believe you guys will greatly benefit, so check it out today. Check it out. Chris, what are you spending on a monthly basis for advertising? I know you mentioned earlier 10% mm -hmm. you put back into marketing. That's right. Give us a quick breakdown of how that 10% is allocated. For sure, so my biggest uh, channel that I spend the most money on is Google Local Services. So we were spending 4,000, now we're spending 5,000 just in that. Mm -hmm. And so now we're combining that with Craigslist ads, Yelp ads, and uh, Facebook ads. What's your total budget? So so that's 10,000, right, uh, a, a month. It's, it's quite big, So, but the most amount, it goes to, to Google Local Services. Mm -hmm. that is the number one so about five thousand a month and now we're spending let me see it's two thousand in uh, yelp ads and then it's about another thousand in and facebook so currently it will be the the least expensive of them all mm -hmm. and but it still works you know it has a lot of traffic in it so i still get some business out of that out of that nest egg of ways to generate business what's giving you the best roi is it google google local services okay. by far you know really these, these customers their buying intention is higher so because they're literally searching house cleaning in an area and mm -hmm. then when they call you they're literally ready to roll if anything the other companies is more like lead generation so you still need to work those leads mm -hmm. but google local services they're ready to to purchase your service In terms of services you offer, I know we mentioned Airbnb, you guys know he does a lot of that. Give us a quick 30 second blip 
into all the services that you offer mm -hmm. and those that may, maybe you want to add later for more profitability. Absolutely. So yeah, we do Airbnb, that's our bread and butter essentially. Uh, we do house cleaning, which is you know the standard deep cleaning and move outs. And then we recently added the carpet cleaning. So I, I didn't want to invest in like a truck mount. I said, mm -hmm. let's, let's test it, let's see how we do. So we bought a portable machine. Uh, it works great. And so I think we're really going to move into the truck mount for, uh, you know, in the next coming months. What's making you think carpet's a good addition? Um, you know, so essentially all the customers that we service on a recurring basis, they, they're the ones like, oh, do you offer carpet cleaning mm -hmm. as well? So every, it's not as, as recurring as the cleaning, like every like month, that, but it's yeah. like every three or every six months. But I figure, well, they're already our customers. It's very easy just for them, you know, to sell, offer another service and they'll buy it. They're giving you the feedback. That's right. That, hey, we need and this. And then just like, it's time to open it. Why do you think cleaning businesses fail, Chris? Um, what I happens? Th I think the number one reason uh, cleaning businesses fail is because of the lack of uh, customers. So they don't know how right. to bring more customers. So it, it really comes down to that. And then the little customers they have eventually cancel. Is it a good idea or do you think there's a downside to growing a cleaning business too fast? Like what? Um, yeah, what I think, you, know? Uh, you know, that also creates a, you know, a lot of problems when you're growing too fast. I guess what you need to focus at the beginning is put your processes in place and then you stick to them and then that will make it even easier for you and actually you still scale fast but you know in an organized way I mean, no just, process growth disaster disaster right? it's a recipe of disaster um, I think uh, it, it happened to me in the first year we were growing fairly fast without systems and I had everything inside my head mm -hmm. uh, it, it was like terrible only for so long. yeah for so long and then uh, but that's when you start implementing systems and what can I do to make things better yeah it's super important All right, let's do Blitz with Chris. Thank you guys for submitting all your questions. First one's from Delilah Mast asked, how do you train employees to clean with the same level of excellence? That's a great question. The way we do it, we you send them with a, with a team that is already experienced and we tell them our process, right? Make sure that you check everything on the checklist and then that way then they learn it very fast. That's it. Marvin Robinson's asking, what is the secret to getting Airbnb clients? Oh God, uh, you won't have any problem getting Airbnb. It just exploding in popularity and I don't think there's enough cleaners out there. The reason I'm gonna be calling you, really, they're, they're, it's, it's so much Huge popular. Demand. Yeah. Okay. Rodney's asking, what's the best way of finding employees? God, in my case, it's just combining every platform that you have out there, you know, having Indeed, Craigslist, and Facebook groups. A lot of people are asking what website builder and booking software you use. Uh, so for my website builder, I use WordPress, and for my booking and scheduling software, I use Booking Koala, and I'll show you how to optimize them inside the course. Okay, Mimi's asking if you can share the secret in being profitable in Airbnb, what stands out? Uh, don't offer just cleaning. Offer, mm -hmm. offer a, uh, a, like a one-stop shop for them. Cause think about it, you know, the Airbnb hosts, they need laundry. They yes. need someone to inspect the homes. They need someone to, to, to make sure that everything is running. So offer a wise group service, co-hosting is called. Awesome, okay. <laughs> Andres, or Andres uh, is wondering if you worry about your workers taking your clients and working for them on the, on the side. Uh, never, there's actually a way to prevent that. It is what you, when you hire them, you haven't signed a non-solicitation agreement that is mm -hmm. totally enforceable. That's how you protect yourself. Exactly, Alex, last word, Alex is asking what business book has the biggest impact on you and why? Uh, two Second Lean, after I read that book, it, it really opened my mind that there's a lot of waste within your, in your processes and your work and even your home. And if you apply those rules in that mm -hmm. book, it will certainly change your life. Uh, the other one is e, e myth uh, book. So it essentially have your, your business run without you. Awesome, you guys will share those books to the lucky winner if you guys just comment below on how we can improve our podcast. Since we last spoke with you, um, what's changed in the business and how has that impacted your growth? Uh, well, yeah, one of the bigger things that we did is that we moved from storage units from the last time that, that we show you guys. It doesn't have any heating there, so it's kind of hard during winter. Mm -hmm. So we did move everything to a new storage unit that has, has heating inside. So having a warm, nice location is certainly improved. Still waiting to find the right location for the office, but you know, Got the it. price is still going up. So I'm just waiting for the right time. So last time we spoke, you were talking about hitting the 1.5 annual revenue mark. Did you reach that goal? We just short from that. It was 1.4. Uh, the, the last month of December really slowed down, but Got we it. were just short of the, of the goal. But this year, we for sure we're gonna get it. We're probably gonna looking at 1.7. Wow, okay. So, yeah. 
Richard, we're here at the new location where Chris operates his business out of, right? That's right. Why don't we go show you guys an inside look? I remember being at the other one. Yeah. Um, it was slightly a different orientation, but what do you do here? So, what happens at this location? So the other location that we had it didn't have heating, so we decided to move in here. You know, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a little more warmer, and so well, we have inside. here um, all the cleaning supplies that are for our Airbnb customers. Mm -hmm. So this is all the supplies for refilling all the um, our units. Okay. Clean supplies. This is actually cleaning for us. So some gloves. So essentially, we use this for storage. So with all the girls come here. Mm -hmm. Essentially, they grab, they grab a bag. the bags. Yeah, just like before. Just like before. Uh huh. Yeah. And so now we have more marks. Right? This is skin size. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, and so the only I guess the only downside about this is just you know because it's not right in the entrance, so we right. have to drive. But it's better than the other one. But that's scaling and growth. At some point, I can see yourself having your own storage. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. Location, profit margins. Has anything changed over the last year for you in terms of profit margins? And where do you want to be? And where are you at now? Uh, great question. So I'm currently at a 15% net. Ideally, I really want to be at 20. Kind of hard with now with the new insurance rate. So I'm going to be stuck with that for for the next three years essentially. Is that so, industry standard, 15%? Uh, um, Even it, if you're I, businesses that have 60, 70% profit. It, it definitely, yes, but this one, because you, you know, you have, uh, you need labor in order to pro right. produce, uh, you know, it really takes a, a big chunk out of that. And then also you need to protect them through, right, against accidents and that insurance, you know, is yes. also taking uh, a good chunk of that. Hmm. People watching right now realize how difficult it is and challenging, especially in these times, to find reliable employees, right? That's right. So how do you, where do you look for them? How do you find employees, mm -hmm. whether they stay or not? Mm -hmm. And then how do you take care of them to keep them as much as possible? Back in the day, I uh, was only relying on, on Indeed. So I was running mm -hmm. ads on Indeed, try, attracting some people. And I still do, but now I combine other two platforms because really I cannot grow if I cannot find people. So right. I'm spending uh, ads on Indeed. So that's number one. Uh, Craigslist ads, that's number two. And then Facebook group, guys. Facebook groups, it's been, uh, actually uh, great top performer uh -huh, uh -huh. You say? I actually uh, I think we got two of our best cleaners came from a Facebook group so totally Good. free so definitely just combining these three platforms and, and just constantly uh, be recruiting so again one of the things that I you know I, I've been able to do and keep my current employees you know with us right uh, it's just you know creating that company culture that I mentioned on the previous video is just really you know celebrating their birthdays you know taking them to uh, you know family gatherings every now and then that's so, so yeah, it's, I think it's one of the best things I've, I've done. Re really make everyone part of the family, like like align them with the same goal that we had. Mm -hmm. So we all embrace it and we move forward with it. What do customers look for typically out of a cleaning company? I think this is actually very important to mention. They're not really looking for the for the cheapest price. They're not looking no, for the no. cheapest price? Some do, right? But people that really have, you know, uh, homes, they actually live there, um, they were looking for quality. You know, essentially you're not selling them a cleaning, you're giving them their time back. Because essentially they're not gonna spend three, two, three, three to four hours, you know, we're gonna do it for you so you can do other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's all about the quality. And then just make them feel that ah, when, you know, when they're, when they're finished, I love when they get this text of like, you guys did amazing, my husband never looked this clean before. So it's a really good feeling to have that, right? And Absolutely. just give them time back. Now, what are your biggest struggles uh, as a business owner right now and how has that changed since we first met? I think my biggest struggle is still being finding employees. It really <laughs> comes back down to that. So you like know, everything surrounded the, everything. The, the amount of, of people looking for cleaning services, business are now opening. So mm -hmm. business is out there. We constantly get calls, but we don't have the people to do it. So we turn them away. My biggest hurdle, my biggest impediment is just finding the right people. And you work through uh, that uh, difficulty, right? In thorough at the course. So I'm just want to bring that out again, that there's so much that we can do absolutely uh, i have I'm we talk forever about it that's why the course would be important absolutely you know that the, the course really covers everything that you need to do in order to attract them so how to much to pay them how to train them everything in between guys i think it was the most critical parts of the industry just having your teams or your field workers ready to roll and, and train so they can perform okay what is your biggest monthly expense let me guess 
probably labor. Yep, that's the um, one. We've talked about it in our previous video, but anything else you want to add in terms of how that's changed over the last year for you? In yeah. Any other overhead? Yeah, you know, so every year you get your workers' compensation industrial insurance adjusted. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we did had a, a small accident this past year and that affected our rate so quite a bit. So I guess from the biggest expense that it was uh, labor, now my workers' compensation is right about there. Too. Does it go down after a uh, time? Uh, or? That's what I asked the person, like, so what happened? So after three years of not having any accidents, mm -hmm. they readjusted again. Wow, three so, years. Do so, you mind sharing what, what happened? Uh, yeah, so it's actually a, a, a learning very, opportunity. Th it, it's a learning opportunity. So uh, it was one of those old windows that you, you know, uh, pull up. Wow. And so okay. the lady was cleaning it, but we didn't think about putting something to hold it in case it dropped. So the window fell on her hand and fractured her hand. Oh, wow. So she couldn't work. And so essentially your insurance, the industrial insurance only goes up when the worker uh, can no longer work for a certain amount of time and then need to get paid. I need to be in the insurance business because oh, yeah. I pay a premium every month. And then when something happens to use that premium, they uh -huh. bump up your premium exactly. after that fact. You're like, what? <laughs> I know, that's right. Are you implementing any strategies for <laughs> lead generation? Besides yeah. the Google and the Yelp, yeah. are you actually doing outside of that something else to just bring more business? Absolutely, so the way we do it, I have my VAs scrape data from Silo. I tell my VAs, okay, go and go to Snohomish County, scrape all the uh, results that you see for realtors in this area, come up with a list, and then we call, call them, you set up an appointment, and then that's what I go. So definitely that's what we do for lead generation. So your VAs do, uh, on Zillow, they do Look for Airbnbs as well? Or? Uh, no, not Airbnbs, like, just property managers, real realtors, agents. real estate agents, all that. And then we come up with a spreadsheet and then literally call, call and, and call email. And so that's what we do. What percentage of you know new business coming in is coming in from that strategy? So it's not you know that crazy, but we get about you know if we contact a hundred realtors, at least ten or twelve are gonna say yes. That's not so bad. it's not bad. You know it's not that crazy, but it certainly helps. And then what I like about working with realtors is that these homes are empty; they're just a stage, mm -hmm. so there's no grease, there's no you know the bathrooms are fairly clean. Yeah. So the job is fairly simpler versus a, an habitated home. What is one important business lesson that you've learned in the last 12 months and how did that impact you moving forward? What can you think? I have a great one. It starts documenting your processes. For any business, right? If you're starting, obviously, you know, there's uh, the ways to do it by trial and error. And that's okay, but start documenting everything, you know, create videos, especially videos, you know, record what you do. So that you? way, in a few years uh, max, you're gonna have a library of everything that your company goes through. So you can onboard someone, give them access to those videos. You know, they learn the system very quickly. So definitely document everything from earlier your questions like, what is the flow of having a customer service it and yes. what happens? Literally document that, take it out of your head, write it down, mm -hmm. and then put it in a document. What this does, not only is gonna make your company move Very faster important. or smoother, but essentially when you want to sell it, that's what the value comes in, right? That mm -hmm. instruction, the, the standard operating procedure of your company, this is, like, this is how you run it, here you go, and then it's more attractive for people to buy it. In terms of managing a team, Chris, what tasks are good to delegate to staff? Mm -hmm. And then which ones do you handle personally yourself? So, so now I, I try to delegate as much as possible, really. Okay. From the customer service, that's the first thing I delegated. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife's now, you know, finally out of the field and delegating all the jobs to the girls. So really to delegate as many things as possible so you can really focus on the money-making uh, activities. Which in my wife? case, uh, I'm always looking for contracts, right? I'm, all, I'm visiting uh, apartment uh, managers or property managers, mm -hmm. visiting realtors putting myself out there you know you cannot just be waiting for people to call you yeah if you combine that versus actually going out and you know going and say hey my name is Chris I run this company blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. they always give you an opportunity so that's what I do I just like look for more contracts we, we in real estate we call you the rainmaker right you're there you there go there you closing go. more clients closing that's right that's, that's awesome. right Goal setting for Queen Bee, how do you do it? If you want to reach 1.7, now you're thinking 2.5, what are some crucial components to, to setting a goal? Well, yeah, I think that's a great question. So one of the major components that you need to be so uh, tracking is how many bookings are you getting, right? So get an average of how many, how much are you doing? Mm -hmm. And then so to say, okay, how many customers I need in order to, for me to get to 1.7? So it kind of work the math backwards. That's so so, so it's, it makes it easier for you, right? So like, okay, I need 25 more recurring customers in order to get to 1.7. Okay, great. So 
now we're focused on getting recurring customers. Mm -hmm. So that will be one of the KPIs that I track. So how many customers I'm getting. I need to track also how many cancellations I'm getting because there's also churn, you know, people cancel. Another goal that I always set up high is try to get as many reviews. I noticed when my business crossed the 100 review mark, mm -hmm. literally it was very easy for me to sell the service. There's trust there, there's uh, social proof mm -hmm. that you know what you're doing. For me, I really want to get as many reviews as possible. So the way I look at it, right, we service hundreds of homes and I wish everybody, every customer will take the time to leave it. Not everybody right. does. But so that's what we do. You know, we call them back, say how was everything, you know, and try to make as much uh, as possible from that one sale and to turn them into a long time customer. Do you have so some kind of CRM? CRM for, well for goals? Or? Yeah, so for example, I use ClickUp. So ClickUp, it's it's uh, mm -hmm. it's a great software it, well. it, and, and essentially keeps you organized, right? So you can delegate, okay, this team, the part, customer service department, your job is to collect uh, three more uh, real estate agents. So call them, set appointments for me, and I'll go. Mm -hmm. So we put all those goals. We have monthly goals, quarterly goals, and then yearly goals. And then as we go, we adjust. Like, if we didn't reach the goal, what did we miss? how do we get there again so it's always like set your your, your short-term goals mid-term goals and long-term goals how do you get your employees do you do anything specific with employees that are coming on board to get them up to speed now we know they're experienced mm -hmm. right because you mm -hmm. ask for experience mm -hmm. but anything specific that stands out um, that you do the, the only thing I do right now is just uh, as soon as we get a new applicant I send them with a team that has experience and then as you say just follow them look at our processes for the first day you don't even worry about cleaning mm -hmm. just go and, and look what other people obviously help when you can but just get a sense of how it's gonna work then the following day I just send just one trained person with the new person and so we split them right mm -hmm. and it's really hands-on training all I look for is just if they have uh, work in similar industries like hotel yeah or probably they have tried uh, other cleaning companies back in the day I will not hire people with other cleaning companies and the reason why for that it was because they usually have their own ways of doing things so when they yes. come to you yeah. and it's like well you need to do it this way and then they saw hardwire into the always mm -hmm. so it was hard for me but I'm like you know what it everybody cannot learn everything is not it's not that hard, so just mm. give them the opportunity to learn a different process. Tell me about your quality service guarantee, because not everyone does that. And no. why is it important for those looking to start the cleaning business? Absolutely. To have that as part of it. Um, you really want to make it easy as possible for the customers to do business with you. And one of those things is like offering peace of mind, mm -hmm. right? And say, hey, we do charge a high fee, right? But we're gonna make sure that you're happy. If we miss anything by any chance, just give us a call. We'll go back to reclean at no charge. We really want to make sure that every customer is happy. So we're really making a great effort to do that. Do you pay for this or is this um, just, you market it and say we guarantee it, or what's behind this quality service guarantee? Oh, it was just really just to convince the people to say, hey, you know, because um, usually my, my biggest objection when I'm on the phone is like, oh, maybe it's just too much. I'm not, it's not in my, in my mm, budget. I see. And then that's when I say, well, listen, you know, I have the quality service guarantee. You can choose to go with another cleaning company, but if everything goes wrong, then you're going to have to call me. I'm going to have to redo it. When it comes to strategies, I think there are certain strategies that work at some point, mm -hmm. and then as you grow scale, they, they no longer work. Can you think of those yeah, changes I've, that you've made for yourself? I, I, yeah, so I think one of the platforms I'm gonna probably drop for good, it's Yelp. The amount of business is not there. We get a lot of leads though. Mm -hmm. Lots of leads, hey, I want to quote, I want to quote, and I respond to everyone. And then... What's the drawback then? I don't for, know. For you personally. I, I, some people love Yelp and I, it works I, for them. So. Exactly, so and yes, and you know, but what works for me, what works for you, you know, if, mm -hmm. you, if that works for other person, grow for it, but in my case, it used to work. It really, you know, I will get leads and I will get uh, converted, you know, those leads, but now, it seems like we're just spinning our wheels. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot spending of money, but spending not. nothing, not moving the needle forward. It comes down to people are really looking in other areas. I think Google really is taking over after mm -hmm. they implemented the reviews. Mm -hmm. You know, more people just going to Google to find most, most of the stuff they're looking for. If you could sell your business today, what do you think you'd sell it for? Because ah, I think that's question. part of your exit that, strategy. It, it really is. Point? It really is. So probably going to run it for another four or five years and really sell it. I'm thinking, you know, what, right now with the 1.5, 1.4 million, I can easily ask two times that. And revenue, so that will be three three to four million dollars for the business as of now. I don't yeah. know. I think you want a little too much because it's always a multiple of the net. That of the net? Is. I thought it was like more of the growth. So that's a great <laughs> question. So, but so yeah, the net. But it will be all. But you got to grow it to that point because, yes, it's definitely a, a big industry. That's so, true. Uh, this has been fun. 
It's been incredible. Paul, thank always you. Always a pleasure with you guys. It's always Fantastic. fun, you guys. And then check out that course if you're still watching you'll greatly benefit. Absolutely. Well, that's a wrap with Chris, the owner of Queen Bee Cleaning. I hope you guys took away a ton. Take a second, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell so that you don't miss any of our amazing content that we create for you.